It cannot be denied that there are several deficiencies within the education system in terms of how personalized the learning experience is. Therefore, as educators, we should acknowledge the segregation and discrimination that remains in the classroom even nowadays, especially when talking about minorities as they are full of people with the same hopes, ambitions and dreams as any other individual, as they perceive themselves as the normal people they are, even if a stigmatized conception of themselves is built while interacting with society. Through this piece of research, we seek to answer the following questions. How can we make students see how others perceive the world as, while understanding the struggles they face? Is it possible to make them acknowledge and celebrate diversity through art? Actually, it is encouraged to let blind people manipulate all the items, associating their textures and shapes with their names and uses. Moreover, it is different for each neurodivergent student, as there might be sensory issues. Choosing the autistic spectrum as an example, these textures could evoke different reactions, and we must know in advance what they can be exposed to, as any trigger must be avoided. Hence, neurotypical students would learn to appreciate the textures that surround them, going beyond and attributing meaning to them, how useful and important they are. Therefore, the topics, barriers and equality are also dealt with through our research piece and final artwork. By doing this, it is possible to see the implications of artistic research in other curricular areas. For instance, one of the parts of this project involves creating and describing, which can be associated with language. For instance, they could come up with a story according to the design they've made. In the long run, this project is meant to make an impact on a bigger scale, affecting students, perceiving textures as a way to express themselves and learn from others, through an interaction with a simplified version of what reality can be for the others, along with their struggles. Teachers, knowing how to act and which methodologies are useful, are to the whole society through third parties, educating them to avoid ableism and its impact. The application of this project would cause new pieces of research to appear, both by taking teachers' experience into account and mostly by listening to students who have worked with these techniques, as they are the voices that must be heard. As of now, people with a disability face more difficulties when finding a job than those without disability, which is also accompanied by the priority given to different levels of studies. Therefore, education plays a key role in their development but also in their future job opportunities. We believe that these minorities are the ones that must tell their story, and this is why they have been the focus of our research. We have learned about Molly's educational experience as a blind student, as well as the importance of allowing them to interact with every item as we explain its use and name. The active involvement of students when creating and analyzing their own monsters falls under the high-order thinking skills that have to be fostered, following Bloom's taxonomy. We also advocate for the importance of developing the students' imagination, creativity and understanding of different points of view. Besides, the working techniques we have included are supported by Piaget's theory of cognitive development as well as Vygotsky's. As a matter of fact, one phenomena has taken over our perspective, literally. Ocular centrism is the belief of sight as a far superior than any other of the senses. Because during the Renaissance, they used visual perspective to justify the world around them. Since then, we are stuck with the same thoughts, being resilient to be more curious about our world and how we perceive it. That is why it is important to change this perspective, because it is important for most people to be sympathetic with others who don't have their vision. Among the limitations we face it, we can highlight the lack of time and the impossibility to test the project. As we were unable to receive feedback from real students, we could not see how motivating and effective it is either, so we have relied on our expectations according to the pieces of research we have come across. As for the delimitations, we had to consider the drawing size and the wall painting as a whole, since it should be put together digitally and students should be able to interact with them as they please. Moreover, even if we came up with lots of textures that could be included, lots of them had to be dismissed, which is related to the number of textures that would be introduced in each cardboard box and the possibility of exchanging them. Our central hypothesis theorized that the introduction of texture as an artistic medium will boost blind students' feeling of inclusion, as well as providing a sense of unity and collaboration to all participants. Our main objectives are to expand the students' knowledge regarding textures and their uses when creating art, to stimulate students' fine motor skills and their vocabularies and linguistic skills. Lastly, we aim to enlighten students to the difficulties blind students can have to face every day. For this project, we chose an empirical methodology, where our students learn directly in contact with the textures. 
also learning about the problems students that have a visual impairment can deal with. We will be using direct observation, watching the students at every stage during the project, while also taking notes. The students will also be given questionnaires with the intention of auto-evaluating their own performances, rating the activities and providing information on the subject at hand. We're going to show you the process of how we would make the mural that would be used for the first part of our research study and made with the students in the classroom. In this case, we're using an A4 sized sheet of paper for a more efficient process, but when carrying out this activity with the students, the size could be adapted. The first thing to do would be to roughly map out some ideas of what you would like to include in the mural. Depending on your design, the elements you include would obviously be different. Ideally, the design would be chosen by the whole class. Afterwards, you would start setting each texture in its specific place. There are many different easily acquired textures that could be used, such as sandpaper, aluminum foil, different types of plastics, all of which could be found in any home. The textures we've used aren't any different in that aspect. In this case, we've used cocoa powder for the, for the majority of the soil, ground coffee for the vegetable patch, lentils for the roof of the barn and some rocks, raw cane sugar for the path to the barn and the background hill, lamb's lettuce for the vegetation like the leaves in the tree or the vegetables, colored paper for the sky and the sun, toothpicks for the, for the wood in both the barn and the tree trunk, and cotton for the clouds. The tools include, a, include scissors, a spoon, a small brush, and in the final representation, glue. In these images you're seeing right now, you can probably tell that some pieces of the colored paper have already been cut several times. This is because we wanted to make sure that our students keep in mind that we have to be efficient with our use of resources and we wanted to lead by example. As for the second lesson, we will pick a cardboard box and then decorate it. To do so, we will wrap the lid with some colored paper. Then we will carve some holes on the side of the box, big enough for our students' hands to go through them. In the inside we will have three patches of different textures. To avoid that our students pick through the holes, we will have some paper around them. Each group will have one box with a set of different textures. They will have to address the other students the textures of the head, the body and the extremities of each monster. By doing so, they will develop their communicative skills and also gain experience and trust in their touch senses. Firstly, I collected an image to use as a base for the landscape. After, I had to find images that correctly portrayed the textures we needed. For the trees, I used a leaf. For the trunks, sandpaper. For the grass, I used images of different lengths of grass. The mountains are made of stone, the river is tinfoil, and the clouds are cotton wool. For the second landscape, the process was the same. First the base image, then the textures, the sand is sand, the chest is wood, the starfish is a pink towel, the fish is made of sequins, and the turtle shell is cardboard. The bubbles are an image of bubble wrap, and the crab is made of red Lego pieces.